Hi guys, today I want to do a video kind of two in one. It's a small haul and then kind of like a live update at the end. I will put timestamps in. The reason why I combined those two completely unrelated topics together is because I thought both of them are gonna be fairly short because like I said, it's a small haul. I don't really have a lot of products to show you. At the same time, I really want to update you with my life. Uh, just something's happened and I wanted to talk about it a little bit, but I know it wouldn't take long either. So I thought, hey, let's just put them together. And timestamp will be down below if you only want to know what's going on with my life. Of course, you can feel free to jump over. But let me talk about the products I recently got first. The first one is actually a palette. This one I got from Pure Cosmetics. They sent this one to me to try out and I was really excited. Uh, it's called Love Your Selfie 3 palette. I tried to look this up online. I wasn't able to find a whole lot of uh, information about this. I don't know if it's because it's too new or maybe it was just not sold everywhere. I'm not sure. Um, what drew me first is this packaging. Can you see those glitters? They're just in this like double-sided um, plastic here. So they just, you know, run around. It's kind of fun. I thought that was a cool design. And at the same time, you can kind of see through the products in here. I probably wouldn't travel with this because the plastic on top right here is pretty flimsy. It's the kind of plastic that you can easily press through. So for that reason, and because the surface area is pretty big, I definitely wouldn't travel with this. But this palette itself is really cool because I thought all the colors in here are very neutral. So you can see this is the palette. So basically I would divide this palette into three sections. One section would be those nine eyeshadow shades up here. Those are neutral, a little bit more like cool toned uh, shadows. And then on the bottom, those three are a little bit more like a bold shadow situation, especially those two are just straight up glitters. And then over here, we have three bigger pans of face products. The quality of the matte shades are really good. So for example, right here on top, this is Affectionate. I use this to uh, set my eye primers all over the lid. And I use this one as transition shades. This is in the color Witty. And then I also use this really deep uh, kind of deep brown shade in my outer corner. This is in the color Adventurous. Those three colors perform so well. They blend out easily. They do have a little bit of a fallout, but you can just tap off your brush. It's not a big problem at all. They blend out, they're pigmented enough, and I think they perform gorgeous. However, what's lacking in this palette is actually their shimmery shades. I feel the shimmery shades are just not so pigmented for some reason. So I used Passionate right here, uh, this one in the middle, all over my lid, and I feel it just doesn't really show up very nice if I use a brush, so I try to use my fingertip with it. And I think it came out okay if I use my fingers. And then I also put on uh, Compassionate right here, this shimmery color on top. And I use this more closely to the inner corner of my lids. And same thing, I have to use my fingertips. But I mean, it's okay. Like, I realized this one would be a really good beginner palette because as a beginner, you probably wouldn't want some overly pigmented eyeshadows because you can make more mistakes so i feel you know this palette being so neutral toned and also the shades are not so super pigmented it could actually be really helpful for beginners and then the two glitters are kind of just like i don't really get it they are really just packed loose glitter in there so when you're using those you should definitely expect some sort of fallout but they're not unusable. You just have to be a little bit more careful with it. Maybe use a glitter glue. They do show up really nice on the lid. And now let's talk about those three face products. I am actually really impressed by those. I thought those three shades are perfect. They're really easy to use. The bronzer itself is not too deep, at least for my skin tone. I feel a lot of even lighter skin tone people could use this too. It's slightly more on the warm side, so I don't think you can really contour with it. It's just gonna be a bronzer, but it blends out really beautifully. And this is what I have on my face, uh, bronzer and blush. And the blush is right here. I really, really like the tone of this blush. It's pretty pigmented though, so you really have to go with a lighter hand. And the blush is in the color Classic. I thought those kind of shades are just very easy to use. They match basically any looks that you come up with. 
And the highlighter here is in the color Iconic. It's really pretty. My only complaint is that it's a little deeper. Right now, I could use it because my skin tone is like not the palest. But I imagine it's gonna cause trouble for a lot of people. So it might just become kind of like a blush topper for someone. So that's overall my thoughts on this palette. So it depends on where you are with your makeup. Um, you can decide if you need this palette or not. The next product I got was completely unplanned. I kind of actually regretted this. This is a foundation. It's from CoverGirl. It's called True Blend Matte Made Foundation. Uh, it says it's comfort matte, transfer resistant, and the color I got is L30. Uh, does it have a name? It's called Golden Ivory. I just... <laughs> I did not plan this well. I went on my holiday break with a almost used up foundation and I ended up finishing completely and I was just out of foundations when I was out. So I had to go grab something and I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on things so I grabbed this one. It does have a pump which is uh, very nice, it's easy to apply. My complaint is that one, the color didn't match me very well. It's a little bit too light for me and a little bit too pink toned in a way. So I think it does kind of look weird on my face, especially with a concealer on top of it that looks like, like that matches my skin a little more. So I feel the concealer and the foundation just doesn't blend in very well. It seems like my face was dirty or something. Um, that's one thing. And the other thing is that the coverage is really, really light. I try to build it up, but I think instead of getting more coverage, this one just became a little bit more cakey. So I just, I'm not a big fan of the formula either. So I don't think I'm gonna continue to use it. I probably would try to pass it on to someone that has better skin situation than me. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I have some terrible breakouts right now. I, I just, I, I need some high coverage foundation and I can't afford to have anything cakey to cling on to my acne dry patches or anything like it's just not gonna work out so i used it for the week when i was in desperate need but now i'm back home i'm just done with it also i should mention that is not the foundation i have on my face today because i'm completely done with it i don't want to touch it again all right the last product now it's actually really exciting this one is the shurimura skin purifier pure pore thinnest uh, Sakura Refreshing Cleansing Oil. It's a long name. Basically, it's a cleansing oil and this one, I believe the pink colored one is made for combination to oily skin. They have different varieties and I think this one fits me the best. If you remember, um, about, was it August or September, I just got a full-size bottle of this and I actually have it right here. <laughs> See, but this one is all finished. I just haven't had the chance to talk about it in my empties yet. Both of those were sent to me from the brand uh, Complimentary. I'm really thankful that they did this because this product is not the cheapest out in the market. I used up this one completely and I liked it so much, so much. I just started on this one. I'm super excited. I get another like two, three months of this without actually paying. So I'm going to continue to use this. And also, if you remember, I also a couple months ago bought this one, a cleansing oil, because, you know, this product is not cheap. So I just really wanted a cheaper alternative. So I went for this julep guy. This one is called Love Your Bare Face Hydrating Cleansing Oil. I have used multiple of those many years ago and I always remember I really liked this product. So I thought I could use this as sort of like a alternative. But under straight comparison, I just realized the julep one is not really cutting it for me. This one to me is a lot more thick of an oil. It's almost like um, a little bit like an ointment when you are trying to push the product on your face, like spread it out to, you know, clean your face so it needs to cover all of the surface area, right? But it just doesn't spread easily because how thick it is. So that's really annoying and I ended up using a lot more than this one because this one I just need a pump or sometimes two to get my entire face and makeup off and this one I have to use multiple palms and going back and forth to try to get more to cover my face and I feel this one doesn't rinse off easily it's like um, I would try to rinse it off with water first and then I would do a 
um, cleanser, like actually a double cleanse kind of step with the Shure Mora one. Even if I don't use a cleanser, just with water, I feel it already cleans my face pretty well. I don't feel greasy or anything. I mean, the double cleanse is more so just like for my psychological reasons. But this one, it definitely does not rinse clean with just water. You can feel the leftover grease on your face. You can feel it kind of just stays tacky and you definitely have to use soap afterwards. So. I don't know, I just thought it's a good chance for me to update you guys with my thoughts on this product now. And I just feel, what a difference. And I love the Shurimura one so much more. I turn off some lights here. I feel it got a little creepy. It's so dark. It feels like I'm filming in a pitch black room. But anyways, uh, hopefully that works out. I do want to mention this time Shurimura sent me the uh, cleansing oil and on top of that it, they also gave me a eyelash curler so this is really cool because uh, for me eyelash curlers is always really hard to find I have the typical really flat complexion if you can tell like I don't really have a nose bridge and my eye my um, what's this called brow bone is not prominent or anything it's just typical kind of Asian figure I guess the, the this part is just kind of flat and a lot of the eyelash curlers don't work out for me because they're very curled like they are a big C this way and then it just goes in like this and it doesn't grab my lashes in the middle portion and it pinches my eyelids on the tip corners if that makes sense so for me a eyelash curler has to be relatively flatter more like this and then it will hug my eyelid so it's usually pretty hard for me to buy eyelash curlers in America because I just don't feel all the shape of the curlers really are made for Asians. Uh, Shuromura is a Japanese brand and their products are perfect for me. Uh, this one is not as curled. Hopefully you can tell um, if you have comparison to your own eyelash curlers, you can definitely tell this one is pretty flat actually. Um, so for that reason, it grabs my lashes really nicely and it doesn't pinch anything. This is what I use today and I'm being loving it and I'm just really thankful I get to have a good Asian eyelash curler. Alright now, like I said, I just want to do a quick life update because I kept thinking about putting it into some videos but there really isn't a whole lot to talk about and I feel bad kept, that I kept putting it off. Um, and I don't, honestly, I don't really feel it's necessary to even tell you guys in a way like it's my own life, my privacy, it doesn't matter. But at the same time, like it's affecting my filming schedules. Um, for that reason, I do feel I'm a little bit obligated to give you guys a reason why I'm not uploading or filming or editing as much as before. So one part you guys already knew that I started working late last year, so that definitely affected a lot of things, uh, I have to admit. But that's not the only reason. The other part is that I'm also pregnant and I am having a pretty difficult pregnancy this time around. My last pregnancy was like almost three years ago and that one was very easy, like nothing really happens and it was just like going through life. Wasn't a big deal. This time I was really sick, really fatigued and I just like I don't want to be bothered honestly like I didn't paint my nails for weeks on uh, and I barely want to do any makeup in the mornings because I just want to sleep I can sleep like 12 14 hours a day and I just don't have the energy to film or edit or post anything or even to be bothered like I just lost all interest basically and now i feel a little better i think um i mean the second trimester now so i don't feel as sick as fatigue so i'm trying to catch up on my filming a little bit i'm trying to paint my nails do my makeup <laughs> more regularly but at the same time i'm also having a lot of skin issues i'm breaking out like crazy and that's probably just hormone related and there isn't too much I can do about it and I'm having terrible allergy um, reactions and and there isn't much you can do about those either because there's so much restriction on medication when you're pregnant it's it's just rough you know so I feel um, I just didn't have as much 
energy really and some of you guys have even pointed out in my previous videos like oh you look sick or you look tired which is true um, I was almost kind of like swollen a little bit too it was just so weird I was losing weight because I couldn't eat much and I was throwing up but at the same time I was kind of swollen it, it just it was not a good three months <laughs> let's just put it that way and for that reason I you can definitely see my channel suffered quite a bit and I really want to keep this up I think now I feel better I'm more motivated again I do feel this is my hobby I put it away for three months just because my life needed me to but now I want to get back to it and it almost makes me anxious that once the new baby comes in the summer like what's gonna happen uh, am I gonna have to put it off again I hope not but you know those are just the kind of things that happen in life that you sort of just have to make way for so I don't know um, like I said, I don't feel I really need to tell you guys I'm pregnant. Like, that's that's my life. But at the same time, because it's affecting my channel so much, I do feel bad. Like, I kept telling you guys I'm going to try to do better, try to do better. But, you know, sometimes you just can't. Like, your body, your physical body isn't allowing you. So, I feel I need it to let you guys know. And also that you can be prepared when I take a short break again in the summer maybe <laughs> we'll see we'll see how that goes and that definitely also affects a lot of my project planning plans because I know I wouldn't be able to be dedicated to a lot of things later half of the year basically my main focus has to go on the baby and I don't want to drag myself into some year-long projects that I can't finish um, things like that I'm sure you understand, but that's it. That's all that I need to do today, the small haul and the small life update. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give me a like and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.